Okay, so as I was saying, a point A is going to be the object that we're tracking, and point B is, you know, kind of like how the function does the job of tracking it. So, you know, as time starts, A is moving really, really quickly to the right, and you can see B is sort of rising, showing the distance that A is traveling. Now, this is a bit tricky to show because I'm not looking at a one-to-one -one scale, right? It's why they don't seem to be looking moving at the same speed, but with a one-to-one -one scale, it's kind of difficult to show, but we could we could try it again. Okay, so here you go. So A is moving, and B is sort of tracking that movement, and then you can see B's slope is getting uh, more narrow as A slows down, and then you have A stops and starts speeding up the other way, and then it's slowing down the other way. I'm just going to pick up the speed here a bit. It comes back to this problem, this part here, this, uh, this minimum, and then it takes off, right? So again, kind of like turns, turns, and it's back at its origin. Okay, now the idea here, what we're supposed to do, we're supposed to find the object's velocity and acceleration at four seconds. Is the object accelerating or decelerating? Now, this is, in my opinion, not very, not the language we should be using here. We don't actually want to know if it's accelerating or decelerating. Let's be more specific. Is it speeding up or slowing down? Because accelerating and decelerating, sometimes you get mixed up between is it positive or negative? And I don't mean is it positive or negative. I mean, are we moving faster than we were a moment ago or not? Right? So at four seconds, let's analyze. So let's uh, zoom, zoom back in a sec. We'll put T at four. Now at four seconds, Let's look at what section of the graph we're in. Let's use our calculus knowledge first. This is a max, and this is concave down. This is a min, and this is concave up. So of course, somewhere in this region, not exactly sure where yet, but somewhere in this region is an inflection point in which you change from concave down to concave up, right? So if you're in a concave up interval, and you are heading towards the minimum, right? So we're concave up, but we're decreasing. That must mean we're slowing down, right? Because just think about what this has to be. The second derivative at this point has to be positive because we're concave up. And the first derivative is negative because we're you know, uh, in a, a decreasing interval. So we're going to be slowing down at this section. Okay, Let, let's prove that now mathematically. So let's take the derivative of f and we get the, we get the velocity function. Okay, Now the, the velocity at 4 is negative 12. So if we draw a line uh, with the point b and y equals negative 12x, right, that tangent there that passes through b has a slope of negative 12. And we knew that because it, it definitely has a negative slope, right? Then you take the derivative of, the, of f prime, okay? and you get the second derivative. This is the acceleration function, right? If you take this, if you check this at 4, you see that it is positive. It's concave up, right? So this object is traveling at negative 12 meters per second, but it's accelerating at positive 6 meters per second squared, right? So this object is slowing down at this moment. Okay, let's just write this down and get this, get this clarified. Okay, so well, first we'll write this down. So v of 4 is equal to negative 12. That's what we found, right? Then we found that a of 4 is equal to positive 6. Now, so what I'm going to write underneath this is since uh, v4 uh, times a4 is less than 0, right? As in, and remember, this is just like the mathematician's way of saying, i.e., they have opposite signs. Uh, the object is decelerating, that is to say slowing down. I think slowing down is a better answer uh, rather than decelerating, but slowing down. Uh, okay, so that's how you, that's how you, uh, that's how you do that kind of question. It says, when is the object at rest? Okay, so to do that, again, you know, let's go back to our derivative function. So we'll just hide the second derivative for a sec. We'll get rid of this tangent that I drew. We don't really need that. And we'll get rid of this point C, since I was just guessing where that was. Now, the derivative function here, I think if we try to factor this thing, factor f prime, you see that the derivative goes through uh, 
at 5 and at 2, right? Uh, again, if you're not sure, you divide this all by 6, and then you'll see it. You can factor it because it's a, it's a ten, 10 and a 7, the positive 10 product, but a negative 7 sum, so negative 5, negative 2 should do it. So 5 and 2 are going to be your two values, uh, and this is when the object is momentarily at rest. So let's write that down. So when is the object at rest? Uh, v of t, v of 2 equals v of 5 equals 0. Therefore, the object is stationary at t equals 2 and t equals 5, right? Those are the, those are the two times when the object is stopped and there are turning points on the graph. When is the object moving in a positive direction or a negative direction? Okay, to do this, what you want to do is you want to create a table that analyzes your derivative. So let's make a table. Uh, we need the derivative. You need interval 1, intercept 1, interval 2, intercept 2, and then interval 3. Okay, so let's make this. So we'll say uh, uh, v of t. Uh, we'll be analyzing here. And then we'll say um, t less than 2, t equals 2, 2 less than t less than 5, t equal 5, and t less than 5. Okay, so you have those. Those are the relevant intervals for the object's motion because we're, it's an analysis of its velocity graph, right? So velocity. The velocity function, just to look at it one more time, we'll just, just get it here quickly. So the velocity function is 6x squared minus 42x plus 60, right? That would be... Uh, so it's a, it's a parabola, it opens upward, which means, and we know it has intercepts at 2 and 5, so it's 0 here, it's 0 here, it's positive to negative to positive, right? So underneath this, we're just going to write moving right, stopped, moving left, stopped, moving right, okay? So that would be basically, and, and again, you know, this is consistent with the picture that we have, right, of the way this object moves. It it moves to the right. Let's just go back and watch it quickly one more time. Okay. It moves to the right, stops, moves to the left, stops, and then moves to the right again. And then it just keeps going in that, in that direction, right? And that's what we've said here from an analysis of its derivative graph. Okay, draw a diagram to illustrate the motion of the object. Again, what you're doing here is you're drawing uh, this cubic. Let me just get rid of the derivative for a sec. Okay, it starts at 0, 0. It rapidly rises up until this point at 2. And then it drops down until this point at 5. And then it starts rising again. Something like that is, is all you need there. Just a, a sketch of it is good. Find the total distance traveled in five seconds. Now, this is a difficult idea. Um, and when does the object return to... This is a much easier idea. Let, let's analyze F first, and then we'll come back and talk about E. So, when does the object return to its initial position would be S of T equals zero. Uh, to solve this, right... Let's look at the equation again. So 2t cubed minus 21t squared plus 60t, right? So 2t cubed, 21t squared plus 60t equals 0. Now, to solve an equation like that, uh, we know what we need to do. We need to factor it, and then we need to try to solve the quadratic, right? So let's factor it. Factor out a t. We get 2t squared minus 21t plus 60. Now, that, right, doesn't have any solutions because, the you know, the old discriminant b squared minus 4ac here would be 21 squared minus 4 times 2 times 60. Now, 21 squared is 441 minus 480. Right, uh, is what you get there, which is negative 39, which uh, therefore there are no, no solutions.
Okay, so you can't you can't actually solve the quadratic part of that. So the only solution there would be the one that we already know, the t equals zero part. So like this part here, I'm just going to highlight it in red. That part has no solutions. So there is still a solution at t equals zero, which is when the object is actually at its starting position, right at zero zero here. But there is no other time when the object returns to its initial position. It never, never comes back. So uh, there, it, when does the object reach its initial position? We could say at t equals zero uh, and at no other time, right? So it says, when does the object return to its initial position? So I guess you could say never, uh, it never comes back. Okay, now the total distance traveled. This is a difficult idea. So understand something first of all here. Position is not the same thing as distance. Okay, think about this for a minute. If if you ask me how where is the object, right? So you say like uh, someone's going to look at this question and say find the total distance traveled in 5 seconds. Okay, so what they're going to do is they're going to go well, this function describes the function's position, so I'll just put in 5, and I get back an answer of, you know, 25, and I'm going to give the answer 25. Now, just that, that you can't give an answer like that, right? Because think about what this thing has done. It traveled a, gr a good long distance to the right. It traveled 50 units to the right, and then it traveled many units backwards. So... To do this, what I think I'm going to ask you to do to solve this is I'm going to, we're going to go back to our, our chart up here and we're going to do something. So we're going to make it, we're going to add another uh, sort of layer uh, for distance traveled here because uh, I think this is the best way to do this. To do distance traveled, what you do is you calculate each interval okay, it, between each turning point. So for example, here we're going to do S of 2 minus S of 0. And then for here, we're going to do S of 5 minus S of 2, okay? And the reason that we're doing this, and actually just to clarify this a little bit further, we're actually going to be doing absolute value of each of those things because distance is not the same thing as position. If I'm travel, if I take three steps forward and then three steps back, my position is zero. I haven't moved. But my distance is not zero. My distance is six steps because I took six steps, right? So you see, these things are a little bit different. So you can't get the total distance traveled. Uh, you have to do it step by step. So what I'm going to suggest is, if, so for each turning point, find the distance traveled between uh, this turning point and the next one. And remember that the beginning and end of the interval, beginning and end of the interval count as well. So here, in our case, we kind of got lucky because it's asking us for the first five seconds, and there is a turning point at five, so we can just check five. So to give the answer, right, to give the answer, I'm going to write what I wrote above. Absolute value, S of 2, take away S of 0. Okay, plus absolute value, S of 5 take away s of 2. Now what is the logic here? s of 5 take away s of 2 is asking how far did the object travel between 2 seconds and 5 seconds? We'll find that out. We know that it was going in the same direction that entire time so we can just take the two endpoints and subtract them. Okay? You would not be able to put in, if, if the question said in the first 6 seconds, you would not just be able to put a 6 here because that, that wouldn't work. You're skipping over a turning point there and you're forgetting that the object moved in between that those two times, right? So here we, S of 2, let's just go back here quickly and finish this one. So S of 2, oh, sorry, F of 2 is 52, F of 5 is 25. So let's fill in what we know. Absolute value, 52 take away 0 plus absolute value, 25 take away 52, right? And so we get 52 plus 27, which we get the answer of 79. So the really important thing to think about here, about why does this, why is this answer 79 when the graph doesn't say 79? Remember, we're counting all the distance it moved to the right, and then we're counting all the distance it moved to the left, and we're adding them together. Really good time to just pause and think before you load 
the next section to make sure you understand that.